Good evening, Devon Port. Thank you for asking me to judge your open competition images for both colour and monochrome. You will find, hopefully, that I am a fair but very tough judge. I have always felt that people take pictures and photographers create images, and while the technical aspects of an image are important, they are secondary to the story being told and how interesting it is to the viewer. There is a great deal of time and effort that goes into judging a salon, and this has been no different. Over the past three weeks, I have chopped and changed, viewed and reviewed, and considered each of your images on their own merits and collectively until I finally arrived at the results you will receive tonight. If I have not accepted your images this evening, I hope that the explanation and advice given is taken in the spirit it was offered, that is, with kindness and with the aim of improving you as a photographer. On the plus side, if you are the recipient of an award this evening, then be aware that you have definitely earned it, especially so with a merit and honours, for which I have always set a high bar. I'm sure Eric will have given you a bit of background on me and my photography tours and work background, but if you want more, simply ask Mr Google about Kevin Clark Photo NZ. A final word from me, other than well done and thank you, is that I'm judging your image as an outsider who knows nothing of you. The comments are always about the image presented and how to improve the experience of the viewer, but hopefully making the image better. Please don't take it personally, but do feel free to disagree with what I have stated. After all, photography is an art, and like all art, it is subjective. As my grandma used to tell me, 10 rabbis, 20 opinions. Aries Inlet. I've never been a fan of images that look down into a landscape as it allows the eye to bounce around from point to point and the viewer loses the drama of in the shot. There are exceptions such as the Blue Mountains etc but this isn't one of them. The drama here for me as a landscape photographer would be the play between the rocks and the ocean looking down the beach keeping the image from below the hilltop to hold the viewer's eye inside the shot. Not accepted. Alaskan Church. This church, I think it's the one in Juneau, is beautiful and you've captured the colour as well, but the trees on the left are a big distraction, as are the windows in behind it. I often tell my photo guests to look at the scene first, work out what you are trying to see, and then move around to get the best position to create the image from. It's impossible to go back so take time to find the best spot. Not accepted. Doors at 11. The framing here would have been better to be front on and cropped to remove the sign. It simply doesn't work as it is. Take time to think about how best to portray the subject. If the subject is regular and straight edged, then your position should be the same, especially for doors and windows. Moving two or three steps to the right would have made this a much better image. Not accepted. Evening glow. The landscape itself with all its curves and shapes is beautiful, but in the image the overall saturation and lack of contrast have made it impossible for any subtlety in the landscape to be enjoyed by the viewer. The colour is simply too powerful. I would suggest that the slope running right to left in the foreground is a distraction and will be better cropped out just on the tree line. Getting that fine balance between form and colour is an art form in itself, and this image needs more work. Not accepted. Flaming roads. I admire the concept and the story, but not the execution. I find the flames too strong and the rose too dark. If this is a composite, bring the red more into the image and lower the yellows. If it's a single image, read the light spot metering on the rose and not the flame. From where you read the light in, the, in an image, is one of the single most important factors of how the image will form itself. Not accepted. Golden sunset. A very beautiful landscape, but as an image, this has too much colour and is simply unbelievable to the human eye. I feel that the photographer wanted to bring out the detail in the foreground using the shadow highlight tool. However, it's been overworked. 
Reducing the saturation and warmth of the image would help. And if you make changes to the image, lighting and colour, keep them subtle. Not accepted. Headlands Hotel. Big, strong, majestic building with wonderful towers and shapes which cry out for a better angle with straighter verticals. The halos of the edge of the building are very prominent too, either from replacing the sky or brightening and sharpening the building itself. Not accepted. Height catches the light. A good idea, but the building lines need to be vertical and the tree branches are too dense, which ultimately blocks the image from the viewer. Straighten those verticals as much as possible. Not accepted. Mesmerised. Nicely lit, but whenever people are in a shot, the preference is to see their faces. The detail in the dark areas makes the viewer's eye move away from the blue and try to see what those items are. It really needs a face to focus on, showing them being mem mesmerised. Not accepted. North Flinders Range. Dry, arid landscapes are normally devoid of strong colours and need more contrast and a point of interest where the eye can rest. Unfortunately, this image has neither. As a photographer creating an image, you need to find a point of interest and build your image around that. Not accepted. Not happy. The highlights on the child's head are a distraction and the face is in shadow. The off-centre placement doesn't work either and a close crop in above the child's waist would emphasise the face and the grumpy features more. Keep the distractions to a minimum and make your story strong. Not accepted. Pink Robin. The bird isn't sharp enough and the twig in the foreground is definitely a disturbance. Try only to focus on the head of the bird rather than the body as the closer you get, the less depth of field you have. Here the main focus point seems to be on the wing, lessening the sharpness of the head and the eye. Not accepted. Reflective forest. Abstracts and ICMs, like this, are better as a single image, rather than a double exposure, and the use of colour and movement to create patterns that are strong is essential. Keep it simple is the mantra. Images with clear patterns and easy to follow movement are the most successful. Not accepted. Rural landscape. Nice colours but needs more interest. Find that point of focus and work out from there to create an image that will retain the viewer's interest. Not accepted. Sunset Kelly Basin. The off-centre placement of the wharf, the softness of the water and the very strong oversaturated sunset and reflections don't work together. They don't gel, and it's like two images side by side, which is confusing. Not accepted. Wheels. I spoke to the judge and asked why there was no comment. He said he didn't understand the photo and had no suggestions for improving it. Not accepted. Sun Orchid. The contrast of colour between the flower and the background is good, but a little judicious lighting of the orchid would improve the image more. The light appears to be flat over the whole image, and doing a little dodge work on the plant would raise it out more. An acceptance. A little flutter. A nice shot clearly showing how fast ducks beat their wings. Good separation from the background and the grass base does give the whole image a sense of place and stability. However, perhaps cropping in closer from just below the wings would simplify the shot and increase the dramatic effect of the wings over the stillness of the head. Good capture and acceptance. Bearded Orchid. The separation of the orchid from the background has been well executed and the highlights in the beard are well exposed. I do find that the negative space on the right side is too powerful and would suggest that the use of a vertical crop nearer to the subject would emphasise the plant. If the background isn't required to provide context, don't have any more than is necessary to tell the story of the subject. An acceptance. Colour creation. Well captured, with a simple positioning to create more than just a close-up of the flower. Well done. I'd be careful of the highlights on the edge of the flower petals where you've cut it out though. Keep the edge at around two pixels 
and then use the brush set on darken to remove the edge highlight. And acceptance. Evening light, Juliet Tarns. It's a lovely place and well captured here. Soft light is wonderful. However, I'd suggest that the image appears to be slightly over sharp in contrast to the light. Also, the halos on the hilltop are visible too. And a bit of clone darkening would remove this. An acceptance. Flight over Sprayton. Never the easiest bird to capture in flight or on the ground. The lighting on this one is very good. And even though the image itself looks a little soft in places, it's still good enough for an acceptance. And acceptance. French cuisine. Escargot sur rouge. Well captured, and I love the background of a mix of red, yellow, and green. The snail is sharp, which is good. An improvement that would move it to a merit image would be to lighten the snail only and to remove that white banding on the green stem by either photoshopping it out, darkening it, or when taking the shot like this have a handheld diffuser available to reduce bright spots like this. An acceptance. Lavender fields. It looks a simple task to get a good shot from a lavender field, but it really isn't. Those lines need to be worked perfectly to provide the eye with a pathway leading the viewer to the final point of interest. This image is successful in doing that, with those curves taking me to the small hill in the background. Nicely done. A more powerful statement may be made with cropping out more of the sky and removing the bare foreground. An acceptance. Mossway. Wonderfully soft and ethereal and nicely captured. An improvement to raise it to a merit and beyond might be to crop in on the left hand tree and darken the edges very gently to give a bit of drama, emphasising the flow of the stream, but otherwise very pleasing. An acceptance. New Holland Honey Eater. Very well captured and pin sharp. Nicely done. Since it's a dark bird against a dark background, it's worthwhile using spot metering on the bird and overexposing half a stop to bring the subject out from the background a bit more, which also lends a sense of depth to the image and acceptance. Standout. Well captured and well lit. Try cropping the image to a square format to emphasise that lovely purple diagonal in the background and to exclude the distractions to either side of the flower. An acceptance. Surfer. Good action capture of the surfer and well exposed too. Maybe a little over sharpened on the water and not sharp enough on the surfer, but easily remedied by keeping a single focal point on the surfer's body only and holding your shutter speed above one one thousandth of a second minimum. An acceptance. The glacier. Well captured and well lit. I like the use of the small boat to give a sense of scale too. An acceptance. Two little birds. Nicely captured, but perhaps cropping in a bit more to remove the deep dark area to the right and below would make this a better image. Focus on the subject and get rid of what's not required to tell the story. An acceptance. Wash over the rock pools. Well captured and lit image. I particularly like the softness of the water. Maybe more emphasis on the rock pools rather than including all that sky would match the title better. An acceptance. Wilderness at its best. Nice exposure and well formed to show the waterfall. Not as much drama as the previous two images and perhaps cropping inside that left hand tree and removing the branch from the left side would give more focus to the waterfall itself. An acceptance. Cool waters. A beautifully framed, perfectly lit and well captured waterfall. The texture in the water is well nigh perfect with no loss of details. A definite award winner. My only comment would be that the bottom right slice of the waterfall detracts from the main image. For me, and again, it's the rabbi syndrome here, as does the portion of the image above the tree line framing the top of the waterfall. Cropping in to remove these would have given me no choice but to give an honours. A merit. Growth among the decay. Beautifully captured, well lit, and a wonderful story full of different chapters being told well by the photographer. 
I wanted to give this an honours. However, I felt that the lack of space above the tree was a distraction and the inclusion of the water brought a sense of reality into, an, into the image that I didn't want to see. I wanted the image to be floating on its ruggedly old legs with maybe a bottom edge somewhere in between those barnacles. But that's my view of it. And either way, this is a very well done and worthy of an award. A merit. Russell Falls. It's always a judge's nightmare when you get two shots of the same place. Which is better? You cannot help but compare them. They are both thankfully very well composed and the remarks regarding the previous waterfall image are just as valid here. Well done. A merit. Tawny Frogmouth. A wonderful close-up and the gentlest of highlights in the eye too. Should have been an honours, but I could not get away from being distracted by that very bright highlight of green above the beak and the bright right-hand bottom corner. Crop in closer and rotate the image a bit to remove that. It's not a natural history image, so this could have been darkened down and altered to be less of a distraction. Otherwise, fantastic. A merit. Yellowtail Lunch. Very well done and beautifully captured image. Bang on with the focus point and the lighting. The image of the bird is so strong that the distraction of those branches in the background are lessened enough to keep your eye on the bird. Blur these out a bit more and remove that highlight on the branch. And it's even more of a surefire hit. A merit. Morning Light Mount Sonder. The softness of the first light catching the hillsides is wonderfully captured here. And the curve of the cliff outline weaves its way back and forward down to the foreground. The background colour and the myriad of stars is almost perfect even allowing for the tailing from the long exposure. Combined, they work together to bring us a beautiful landscape that would sit proudly on many of you's wall. Very well done. Honours. Good evening, Devonport. Monochrome images should evoke a powerful emotion in the viewer. They need very good composition, structure, texture and contrast. Removing colour removes the distraction and allows the eye to focus on elements of design and structure. Creating a great black and white is not possible simply by taking a colour image and making it monochrome. The whole concept of an image should be in black and white from the very beginning of the creative process. High contrast, silhouettes, strong sunlight, dark blacks and strong whites all lend themselves to a great image. Muddy greys and flat light are the enemy. I judge black and white image on these premise first and foremost, and they, together with strong storytelling, can make or break an image. All the gear. I like the idea, but the title states all the gear. However, the only part of the image that is in focus is the saddle. Increasing the depth of field by using a higher f-stop will allow you to get more detail over a wider range. Also, try to increase the contrast and get those deeper blacks I discussed earlier. Not accepted. Contemplating. A good idea, however, the lighting draws the eye to the very bright patch on his shoulder rather than on his face, where it should be. There is not enough light on the subject to clearly separate him from the background. In camera, always spot meter off the subject in cases like this, and in Photoshop, Use the subject select and increase the exposure until you are happy with the result. Not accepted. Crashing waves. The image is well exposed, however, it is too distant, which creates a lack of drama. Crop in closer and make the subject fill most of the frame to create the illusion of size. This increases the effect of the image. Not accepted. Having fun in the forest. Having the dog looking straight at the camera would have made this image much more appealing and would have removed the distracting plants in the bottom right corner. The image is very flat and even though there is definition in the fur, it is not enough to lessen the lack of contrast. Not accepted. Hispano lights. This image is full of powerful lines and strong circles, but the lack of dramatic contrast impairs any strong feeling by the viewer to enjoy the image. A closer crop to remove the top of the image with its distractions would also help make this more interesting. 
The framing of the camera isn't always the best for the image that you finally want to show the viewer. Don't let it constrict your final choice of image. Not accepted. Impenetrable forest. This image is full of strong vertical lines and so much texture within the bark of the trees. This cries out stronger contrast to really make the image pop, but it is lacking and very flat. May I suggest that the photographer revisits this image with more contrast, less sharpening, and try to add a bit of subtlety to the variations of light. The title doesn't quite match up seeing as there is a road in there, but I've never put much store in the title when I'm judging. Not accepted. Lemonade. I could not read this image other than it's a shot of a boat called Lemonade, but the photographer hasn't really added anything. And again, it's a rather flat grey, which does not pique the viewer's interest. Not accepted. Reflections. A sound idea and perfect composition, but let down by the post-processing. The halos around all the darker areas, such as the post and the boat, are very evident, and the horizon, in this instance the riverbank in the background, is not level. A more subtle use of post-processing enhancements would bring a better end product, and those halos can be removed, as described earlier, by using the clone set on darken. Lots of YouTube videos showing how to do this, but the best would be from Scott Kelby. Not accepted. The Apostles. It's a beautiful spot and well photographed. It could be said it's one of the most photographed spots in Australia, much akin to our Wanaka tree here in New Zealand. This means that every image is subconsciously compared to all others and needs to really stand out not to get lost in the mire. The lighting again is very grey and lacking in contrast, and the image has nothing to make it stand out from other shots of this coast. I understand that it's a cliché when you are asked to bring more of yourself to your work, but in this instance I think it's valid. Give the viewer what you feel as well as what you see. Not accepted. The face of a pig. Increase the contrast and make the pattern of the petals really stand out. The lighting in this image is currently too flat and needs more character. Not accepted. Winter Serenity. A little less post-processing would make this image more appealing, but it still lacks a particular point of focus. Removing the overhanging branch and simplifying the shot to one subject would help. Not accepted. Baby Magpie. Nice and sharp where it needs to be and well exposed However, I'd like to see a bit of catchlight in the eye of the bird. I know this isn't always possible, but it would definitely improve the shot of any living thing. If there is light in the eyes, they are alive, so to speak. An acceptance. Egret shadow. Bright, bold, well-exposed whites and massively dark blacks make this egret stand out and the shadow across the bird is very good. There's no mistaking the subject matter. Perhaps not having such a dark black background would be better as it would allow us to see more of the bird's legs, which are there, but not there. Well captured though, an acceptance. Graceful elegance. The swan in its environment is nice and sharply caught and sits well within the frame of the image. As a record shot, it's a good one. However, more contrast would enhance the shot, giving more definition to the feathers and the neck ruffles, which tend to be overly grey when viewed on screen. Higher contrast is even more important for web-based images, as the sRGB profile, most commonly used, has only 256 shades of grey. An acceptance. Jenny. A lovely, sharply focused image of Jenny with a bit of light in the eyes to boot, which is great. This lovely young lady has so much character and experience in that face, it really deserves to be highlighted to the viewer by better use of available light to give more contrast. The lighting is too flat to be dramatic and I think as in previous images perhaps the photographer has taken a colour image and made it mono. This is not enough to ensure a great black and white portrait shot and I'm sure young Jenny deserves better than just a nice shot. Accepted. Living in harmony. The egret and the pelican are nicely balanced and in harmony as the title suggests. Nicely captured, but I'd like to see a better selection of where to read the light from if this comes up in the future. 
always read the light from the brightest part of the image, and in this case, it's the heron, blurred out or not. The detail has been lost in the white heron, eager to you Aussies, but thankfully the main subject of the pelican is nicely captured, though it has a little loss of detail in the body at the waterline. An acceptance. Old mates. A nicely captured street scene, well framed and with good lighting. You might have gotten away with a closer crop, seeing as the word antiques is also in the window, which would have allowed closer scrutiny on the face of the rider and of his bike too. But that's being a bit picky. An acceptance. Whiter than white. The dog is perfectly exposed, and I love the fact that you've only included the owner's shoes here. A very good contrapositioning idea. Perhaps just removing the hand at the top of the image using cloning or cropping as it distracts a little from the overall appeal of the shot. Well done. An acceptance. Cairns Army. Really dramatic, low angle and well captured. An improvement to provide more drama would be to crop in from the left to remove the darker area so the eye focuses more on the front rock column. Also, increase the contrast as much as you can to avoid those flat greys and bring out the detail and drama within the shot. Highly commended. Major Smith's Cottage. Great, sharp, well-contrasted image with lots of strong angles and points of interest. I really like this image and wanted to give it more, but the distortion on the verticals should be corrected. It's enough to detract from what is a very good image. A subtle increase in contrast would help too. Highly commended. My ball. Very sharp, well-captured action shot, which could almost be two separate images. Good contrast and detail also lend to the pleasure the viewer gets in the shot. Well done. A merit. The bathhouse. Depth, mystery, angles, diagonals, hard blacks, soft whites, bright whites, contrast, texture, feeling, moodiness and more are all brought to life in this image. Everywhere the viewer looks, the eye is directed back into the building and the deep dark door and window full of mystery and intrigue. Wonderful image. The only slight, and I mean very slight, comment would be to bring the edge in on the left hand side to remove that bright area or at least darken it down somewhat. An honours. Mm -hmm.